Good morning, everyone. My name is Dustin Klein, publisher and chief content officer of Smart Business. On behalf of Smart Business, it is my honor to welcome you here to the 2022 Medical Mutual Pillar Award for Community Service Recognition event here in Central Ohio. Each year, we come together to honor organizations and individuals whose efforts have made a significant impact on people's lives by giving back. Now, we're so pleased to have you all join us this morning especially since we needed to pivot to a virtual conference during this most current COVID uptick in cases. Despite the circumstances, it is always heartwarming to bring people together who share a common belief that by coming together and by giving back, by reaching out a hand to our fellow man and woman, that we can strengthen the communities where we all live and work. As you are aware, this is now more important than ever. And everything that each one of us does makes a difference, no matter how large or small. Now, before we get started, I'd like to thank Medical Mutual, our founding and title sponsor. Your team's commitment goes beyond mere words. Medical Mutual transcends its role as a healthcare insurance company and is a dedicated partner to this region and its residents. So thank you, Rick Chiracosta, Amber Hume, Andrea Hogman, Christine Taylor, Dan Polk, and Veronica Hawkins, as well as your entire team for your continued support, not just of this event, but of the entire region and state. I also wanna thank our friends over at Blue Technologies. They are an IT technology company that deals with printing needs and connectivity. I wanna thank Paul Hanna, Lauren Hanna, and their entire team of Blue Technologies for their support of this event. As many of you know, we started the Pillar Award program back in 1998 with our co-founding partner and title sponsor, Medical Mutual, to recognize companies for giving back to the community. That was the initial goal. 2022 will represent the 25th anniversary of this program later this year in Cleveland. This is the 14th year we've been able to present it here in Central Ohio. Now we truly miss being able to present this in the State House, our usual host, where we had planned to be again this year. But like everyone, with the recent Omicron spike in cases, we've adapted and look forward to being back there in 2023. Now on with the show. In addition to recognizing for-profit companies for their corporate philanthropy, we also recognize and honor individuals who run the nonprofit organizations that do great deeds throughout our region. The individuals who serve on their boards and donate their time, their talent, and their money to causes they're passionate about, and the individuals for whom philanthropy is simply part of who they are. On the screen, you can see a sampling of the nonprofit organizations that have been supported and recognized through the Pillar Award Program over the past 14 years. Today, we will recognize 21 honorees with Pillar Awards, a combination of organizations and individuals. Nominees were judged on numerous criteria, including an organization's overall philanthropic efforts, such as financial, pro bono, and volunteer contributions, involvement on the boards of nonprofit organizations, a nonprofit executive's ability to successfully lead his or her organization towards successfully delivering upon its mission and an individual's personal commitment to community service. During this morning's program on video, you're going to hear from individuals and organizations being recognized about what giving back and the tie between the for-profit and nonprofit worlds means to them. So on to the awards. To present the first one and say a few words about Medical Mutual, please help me welcome Amber Hume. Amber? Thank you, Dustin. And on behalf of Medical Mutual, we'd like to welcome each of you to this year's Pillar Awards. Let me echo Dustin's comments in that we planned on being in person this year. But like everything over the last two years, it seems as though getting back in person has become a day-to-day -day journey. With that said, we are thrilled to be presenting this year's conference once again to a such well-deserving group of honorees. The companies and individuals you will be hearing from and meeting this morning truly define a giving heart. Without further ado, let's meet our first award winner. To present the 2022 Medical Mutual Share Award, please welcome my colleague, Christine Taylor. Thank you, Amber. The heart of Medical Mutual's charitable giving lies in our employee volunteer program, SHARE, which stands for Serve, Help, aid, reach, and educate. This volunteer initiative began more than 20 years ago when a small group of employees came to understand 
that they could make a much bigger impact in the community if they did it together. Through the SHARE program, our employees have donated, packed, and distributed food. They've painted and landscaped. They have become mentors for first-generation college students. And in 2021, they raised enough money to provide more than 232,000 meals for those in need in our community. And it is because of the continued compassion and dedication of all of our employees that this is just a small snapshot of a typical year for us. 17 years ago, we started a special award in honor of Medical Mutual Share Program. It recognizes organizations where the employees are the drivers of community service. And so we are honored to present this year's SHARE Award to pen zones, salons, and spas. For more than half a century, team members at pen zones, salons, and spas have offered their time and talented hands to a multitude of philanthropic organizations. Although it supports many organizations, pen zone is a strong advocate for causes that empower and support women and children. This year alone, Penzone supported the Girls on the Run 5K with a cash sponsorship and with volunteer hair artists who provided fun hairstyles for young girls who participated. In addition, Penzone supports the YWCA, the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure, Hope Village, and the Erin Pink Foundation. Congratulations, Penzone Salons and Spas. Now let's hear a little more about what this wonderful organization has done from Debbie Pinzone, CEO of Pinzone Salons and Spas. Debbie, congratulations. I'm honored to sit down with you and learn a little bit more about how you and your team at Pinzone have done this, especially in such a trying time. Yeah, I am so honored to be here, Christine, and be able to share a little bit of the behind the scenes of how we have really gotten our team involved in all of our philanthropic, um, you know, ideas and events that we do in the community. That's great. So tell me, how do you involve your team members from idea generation to execution to make your philanthropy as a team an employee driven effort? Yeah, we've been so fortunate right before the pandemic hit. We had launched an internal app for all of our team members called Pen Zone One. And it's the one place for all communication in our entire organization. And so it is really great, though. It's really two sided. So we get to hear their thoughts, their feedback, their ideas. It's a wonderful place that they can go there and share, um, you know, different, you know, ideas or causes that they see that is a perfect fit for us. And then we can also put out opportunities in the community and um, they can sign up right there and volunteer. Love that. That's great collaboration. Um, yeah. How has your employee driven philanthropy helped strengthen engagement amongst your team members and just make Penzone an employer of choice? You know, it has just been um, amazing to see this togetherness that it brings. You know, there's nothing can compare to when you can go out and get hands on with a cause that you believe in. And when you can see the efforts that they're making to change our community, it is it is just mind blowing because when you experience it, you know, it really touches your heart. And then you want to share those stories with everyone. And so we can really get our team involved to give this gift that they have, this talent. And then also we've seen like Girls on the Run, we've seen so many of our team members as parents, now their daughters are actually getting to participate in this amazing program. So it's really hit all facets of our team members. I love that. Let's stay on the topic of those efforts. Can, can you share with us some of the impactful volunteer or philanthropic efforts beyond Girls on the Run that you're most proud of your team for spearheading or going above and beyond with? Well, you know, we have been so dedicated to women causes and also breast cancer over the years. And the Susan G. Coleman uh, Race for the Cure, the race day, we have participated in their Hope Village. And it's a tent that we see the survivors before the race. They come and we paint their wigs or their heads or whatever it is, pink. And we do some fun stuff for them to really, you know, give them that spirit to go, you know, race that 5K and do it. And then after the race, they come back to us and we get a pamper them with some self-care. 
nails and uh, chair massages. And it's just a wonderful connection with those survivors. And um, our team just loves that um, ability to be able to give what we do and support them 100% on that day and hearing their stories. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing all of information with us. Debbie, congratulations once again for your SHARE Award. And again, thank you so much. I'm so honored and so proud to be a part of it. Thank you, Deb, and congratulations again. Now, let's watch the first video of today's program. I don't think it's important. I think it's our responsibility. We have a duty and a responsibility as business leaders, as civic leaders, to give back and help our communities where we can. The words service work are not bad words. Um, and, and the greatest thing that happens that I don't think people realize, the more service work you do and the more giving back, the luckier you become. You know, sports unifies people and really has so many benefits that really, not only um, around the world, but certainly uh, at the local level, uh, you know, builds community pride, brings people, you know, makes a vibrant community. So we, we pride ourselves in being able to pull the community together to uh, see these great athletes that come to our community to celebrate sports. I think the greatest work I'm doing is with a team of people in Southeastern Ohio creating jobs in the job deserts and um, having major impact in terms of being an em employer in areas that haven't had new jobs. One of the, the big measurable outcomes um, that is fact is that 79% of the individuals who complete the Alvis residential reentry programs do not return to the criminal justice system. And that's measured after three years of completion of the program not one year or two years. So it really does save taxpayers millions of dollars every year. So Flying Horse Farms has made it possible for thousands of Central Ohio children with serious illnesses like cancer and heart conditions and arthritis to heal, grow and thrive. We do this by hosting week-long camp sessions and sometimes weekend camp sessions and even virtual camp sessions where these children gain self-confidence by meeting others with their similar condition. Um, partnering with Small Biz Cares and doing projects with uh, a local farm. We've also done things um, in terms of helping One Divine Line to Health and their great work when it comes to human trafficking. We're not just about um, giving of our money and um, you know our services, but we also give our time and participation. Our foundation, which is called Grange Insurance Gives, you know, with our foundation, we're able to lend, you know, a helping hand year after year, you know, to many organizations that are helping those in our community transform their lives, you know, get financial security, get housing and food, and food security. Um, and so those are ways that uh, we are driving our philanthropic efforts in the communities. I think it's so important for the companies to take the time and intention to really give back to their communities because it's not only that gift of giving to others, but it truly empowers your team to have this team effort and build this company culture of caring for each other and that we're all in it together. Companies are a collection of people and we're people that we live here, we raise our families here. And so the more that we can do uh, collectively as a company to improve our community, it benefits all of us. And so I think the stronger the business community, the stronger the overall community can be. And we're just proud to support those in the community that are doing the, the important philanthropic and charitable work that helps us all be better. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been said, time is the most precious gift a person can give. In every organization, there are executives and employees who donate personal time, treasure, and professional expertise to help nonprofit organizations in whose missions they believe. Now it's with this in mind that we recognize the 2022 Nonprofit Board Executive of the Year. This year's honoree is Dino Lano, board member of Life Care Alliance.
After caring for his aging parents, Dino recognized the need to help other seniors struggling to remain independent in their own homes. In 2010, he turned to Life Care Alliance, an organization that works to keep older people safe, independent, and in their own home. He served as a board member and now is secretary of the board and a member of the executive and finance committees. In 2011, Safe Light Solutions, Rolando serves as senior vice president of industry and alliance partnerships, launched its own voluntary corporate delivery route for Meals on Wheels. This past year, Safe Light Associates delivered approximately 3,100 meals. So congratulations and thank you, Dino. Congratulations once more to Dino. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now gonna send the program back to your tables, where we'd like you to spend the next few minutes networking. And if you'd like, share how your organization has approached community giving during this past year. If you're a nonprofit leader or a team member, what did you and your organization do to fundraise during these challenging times? Or how did you connect with your constituency to ensure that you were able to serve them? Now we'll see you back here in a little while for the next part of today's program. 